Now let us talk about the case of a tacit collusion under infinitely repeated game. So what happens? Suppose there are two firms. They are competing Bertrand in each period. Suppose I am firm one and you are firm two, and we are competing for Bert, competing uh, in the Bertrand uh, uh, fashion. We are competing in prices, and uh, we collude. And let us say pi m is the monopoly profit, and pm is the monopoly price. So we, uh, you and I, have colluded to tacitly uh, maintain the monopoly price. Right. Let's see what happens. So suppose there are two firms. Suppose there are two firms. Competing in Bertrand fashion, right? Competing in Bertrand fashion, each patent. And let us say pi m denotes the monopoly price. So in case if there were no two firms, they were, if there would have been just one firm, then pi m is the monopoly profit. Right. And let p m be the monopoly price in the stage game. In the stage game. And this is an important line. The firms they have tacitly colluded uh, to maintain the monopoly price, right? So you and I are the two firms. We have colluded together to maintain the monopoly price. And once the monopoly profits are going to be made, you and I are going to share these monopoly profits, right? The firms may collude tacitly to sustain the monopoly price, right? With each firm is going to share the monopoly profits, right? Because you and I have colluded to maintain the monopoly price. So the reward is that you and I are going to get half of share of the monopoly profits. With each firm earning. An equal share of the monopoly profits. An equal share of the monopoly profits, right? And what is the punishment which is going to follow? The punishment which is going to follow is that, I mean, how will the collusion be maintained? Neither you nor I will undercut this monopoly price. So you will also charge monopoly price. I will also charge monopoly price. We will not become greedy. We will not undercut each other because we know that in case if either of us are going to undercut each other, the entire market is going to flow towards each of them, you know, flow towards that, that person. But the problem is that uh, the punishment which is going to follow is that if, you, if either of us are going to undercut each other, then in that case, 
we will be going back to the Nash equilibrium of the game. What is the Nash equilibrium of the game? Marginal cost pricing. In the marginal cost pricing, neither you nor I are going to make any profit. So that's a punishment, right? By using By using a dim trigger strategy, right? Of continuing to collude. as long as no firm has undercut PM in the past. It's a beautiful line of continuing to collude. So if, if we were sitting in the third period and if you and I have colluded, how do we know that we have colluded? Neither you nor I have undercut this uh, this monopoly price then in the next period that is in the fourth period we will be continuing to collude right so there won't be any punishment which is going to follow but if either of us are going to undercut if either of us are going to deviate from this collusion then the punishment is going to follow that they, we will revisit the uh, Bertrand Nash equilibrium strategy which is just the marginal pricing marginal cost pricing and in which Neither of us are going to make any profits. But reverting to the stage game, Nash equilibrium. of MC pricing every period from then on. So if any one of us is going to deviate, then you can't say, no, no, I mean, uh, I have done a mistake. I'll go back to my uh, collusion price. No, I mean, then from that moment on, trust has gone. We do not trust each other. From then from that period on, everybody is going to have just the marginal cost pricing that is zero profits. Every period from then on, if any firm If any firm deviates by undercutting, right? Any firm deviates by undercutting. Well, <laughs> there is something which is called the delta, which is the discount factor. Discount factor measures the value in the present period of the one dollar earned in the future. That is how much valuable for you are the future profits from the collusion. How much patient the players are. Is right. It measures the value in the present period of the 
of one dollar round in future period. So if I'm going to earn one dollar in the future period, what is the value of it today? Right. So if I'm going to earn future profits from collusion, how much value I put to those collusion profits today? That is the question. And the, what is the firm's objective? Firm's objective is that it want to maximize the present and the current future profits, right? Future discounted profits. So firm's objective is to maximize current profits. and future discounted profits and future discounted profit. So if we are going to collude, right? So what is going to be the collusion uh, income stream? I'm talking about form one, right? So either of the form. So in the first period, in case if I have colluded, I will be getting half of the monopoly profits. In the second period, I will be getting delta pi m by 2. In the third period, I'll be getting delta square pi m by 2. And so on. These are, this is the present discounted value. So it's an entire future stream of income, which is going to come from the collusion profits, right? So a successful tacit collusion is going to provide this profit stream. You can take pi m by two common. So it is one upon one minus delta, right? But uh, what profits the firm can make by deviation? That is also important. What profits the firm is going to make by deviation? So if I'm firm one, and if I deviate, then what will happen in the period in which I'm deviating, I'm going to make monopoly profits in that period because the entire market is going to come towards me. Supposedly in the first period I've deviated. So the monopoly profits, I'll get the monopoly profits in the first period, pi m. Because I am going to charge just a little bit than the PM and I'm going to get almost the monopoly profits. And then from the second period onwards, because the grim trigger strategy is going to follow, punishment is going to follow, we will be following the MC pricing. Neither you nor me is going to make any profit. So the future profits are all going to be zero, right? So we need to check that there is no incentive to deviate. So if I undercut you, if I undercut you, if I undercut the collusive price, so collusive price is what PM. So if I undercut you, I'm going to make the monopoly profits in the first period. Then this will be found out that I have, uh, I have deviated from the collusion. Punishment is going to follow. When punishment is going to follow, what will happen? Your uh, neither you nor me is going to uh, make any profits. We'll be following the zero profits. So, profits from deviation would be so if I deviate in the first period, I'm going to make pi m. Actually, it will be a little lesser than pi m, but let's say it is pi m because I'll be, I'll be undercutting pm. So, I'll be charging just, just a little lesser than pm. 
So it won't be exactly pi m, but let's say, okay, fine, pi m. Uh, but then this deviation is going to trigger the grim trigger strategy. And we'll be having zero profits forever then because we'll be following the MC pricing. Uh, so basically, the deviation profits are going to be pi m. So for this deviation not to be profitable, that is for collusion to be profitable. V collusion is greater than or equal to V deviation. That is the profits from collusion are going to be greater than or equal to profits from deviation. So that is pi m by 2, 1 upon 1 minus delta, greater than or equal to pi m. And once you solve this, you will be getting delta greater than or equal to half. So if delta would be greater than or equal to half, uh, we are, I mean, collusion is going to be profitable, right? If delta is going to be greater than or equal to half, collusion is going to be profitable. So if discount factor is greater than or equal to half, collusion is going to be profitable in this kind of scenario, right? So in this recording, in the earlier recording, we have done tacit collusion. We have talked about the infinitely repeated game and the finitely repeated game. The finitely repeated game we have talked in, we have talked about in the earlier recording. This is about the infinitely repeated game. Thank you, Vita.